Hello, good afternoon. Um, we're live on um, the Trade Decorator Festival. This afternoon, I'm joined by Grant Robertson of Shake and Spear. Hi, Grant. Good morning. Hi, uh, how's it going? Good. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, Mark. I'm, good afternoon, Mark, as well. Hey, um, I'm very good, thank you. How are you doing? Um, so, tell us a little bit about Shake and Spear, Grant. Um, so we are a web design and digital marketing agency and we specialize in working with tradespeople. So um, that can be all sorts of trades um, from decorators to boiler insulation to heating engineers to everything in between. Um, and we help them to build their websites and then develop their online presence to help them grow their business. Okay, sounds interesting. Um, so yeah. what are you going to be doing for us today? So today we're going to be focusing on um, websites and we're going to be focusing on how to make the most out of your website. Uh, so we'll be going through some of the core pages that you should have in, on your site and what they should look like and what type of things you should have, have on them to make the most. I've said there's never been, this has never been more important with the current situation with COVID. I mean, it's really important, I would say, now that you have got that online presence because how are people going to find you when the whole world's going online? A hundred percent. And I mean, word of mouth works brilliantly for the vast majority of people and lots of people get their work through that. But more and more, we're seeing that especially the younger generations aren't taking word of mouth as gospel. The next thing, they, the first thing that they do when they get a recommendation will be to go onto Google and we'll cover that in a minute. OK, well, I'm going to leave you to do your presentation. I'm going to remove myself from the screen um, and leave you in, in Grant's capable hands. Excellent. OK, just <clears throat> there we go. OK, so um, today we're going to be talking about how to make the most out of your website. Um, and this um, presentation seminar is based on the idea that you do currently have a website or you're planning on getting one in the near future. Uh, so we're going to be covering, first of all, why should you bother having a website at all? Um, we're going to be getting going over what the right structure is for your website, um, going over some individual page tips. So what looks good on a home page, what looks good on a contact page, that type of thing. And then discussing the question sort of, are we ever done with a website? Are you ever completely finished with it? So first of all, this is me. Uh, as I said a minute ago, I'm the founder of Shaken Sphere. We specialize in um, working with tradespeople. We've been doing so for the last couple of years. Um, and more than happy to ha answer any questions you might have at any point, even if you're not directly working with us. And I have my contact details up on the last slide. So, your website. Um, this is just going to be one part of your online presence, but arguably it's one of the most important ones, if not the most important one, because generally speaking, lots of things will come back. Everything comes back to your website. So. If you're posting on social media and you might be sharing your services, lots of people will then want to click on and read more and it will take them back to your website where you have even more information. Or if you have a Google My Business page, which we'll come to later, uh, that feeds back to your website. And if people are trying to find you on Google in, on, in normal searches, that goes back to your website. So it's worth getting it right. But why should you even bother getting a website if you haven't got one at all? Now, there are three core reasons why. The first one is that I touched on this a minute ago. It legitimizes a recommendation that you might receive. So let's say um, someone goes onto Facebook, as many people do nowadays, and says, I'm looking for a decorator in the Bristol area. Tons of recommendations come through, usually and usually linking to people's Facebook pages or their websites, or some people will just say a name. Now, most people will then click through to those and then make a decision themselves. The actual recommendation process is finished at that point, and now people are making their own decisions based on what they can find. Most of the time, people will want to go to a website to find more information before they even consider picking up the phone. So it's worth having a website to legitimize yourself as a good recommendation. The next thing is, it simply makes you look more professional. It's what people have come to expect of a professional outfit nowadays. And finally, it's just a good avenue to promote your services, especially if you 
have it lined up properly so that you are able to rank on Google. Oh, I've gone through these slides very quickly. Um, so yeah, you have the professional look where we go through the website and people can just take their time. They can come back to it as well. And the promotional avenue is really important as well, especially when you can link individual services which you might offer rather than just having a general blanket cover all. So when it comes to your actual website, and we're talking about the actual site structure of it, what, what are the core pages that your site should have? And we'll go through each one of these individually. Now, lots of people opt for, and it's a good first step, to go for a one-page website where all of the information is on one long scrolling page. Now, these sites are great in so much that they serve a purpose. They serve as a good first rung on the ladder, um, and they serve as a good legitimizer. But the majority of the time, they are just that. They are just the first step. Before long, people want to expand on the services that they offer. They want to um, share more of the work that they've done for a gallery, for instance. They might want to share more testimonials or case studies, client reviews. And this is where sort of the one page website begins to run out of, well, not quite space, but it begins to look a bit cluttered if it's just one long scrolling page. So they work to an extent. Also, from Google's point of view, if you're looking to rank for particular services in your area, you need to have multiple pages, simply because if you have all of your information, let's say you offer external, internal, all sorts of different styles of services, then Google sort of gets confused as to what your priority offering is from that one page. And it doesn't really rank you that highly for, for any of them. Whereas if you have individually tailored pages, and we'll cover this again shortly, it helps you, it helps Google understand exactly what's, what services you're offering and you stand a better chance of ranking higher, getting towards the first page and then the top three. So first page that we'll come to, and that's your homepage. This is the page that lots of people will come across. This is the page that most people spend the most amount of time on. Now, that's why it's really important to focus on why the customer should pick you. And in my opinion, this is your opportunity to grab the potential customer. If it's not particularly well designed, if it looks a mess, it just portrays the wrong impression. So it's worth spending time to get something that looks nice and clean, clearly explains who you are, clearly explains what you do and where you are, and allows the customer to explore the rest of your site easily. Now, I always say that it's worth being personal because people at the end of the day like dealing with other people. They don't like to feel that they're just another cog in the machine or just another number in your accounts. They want to make a personal connection with someone, especially if they're going to be coming into their home. So we like to say, try to make sure you personalize it. So avoid using stock imagery that we found off a different website. Try to include pictures of your own work, at least. If not, include pictures of your livery, your vans, your logos, and really you could also include pictures of yourself, especially on your about pages, which we'll come back to later. So we wanna keep them nice and clear not cluttered, and also clearly have your contact details available for people as soon as possible. Because lots of people, including your current customers, will want you to type in your name, get to your website, click on your phone number to give you a call. Because they might not have saved your number, for instance. So it's worth having those nice and clear. Same with your email address. So here's an example of a site which we actually only just launched last week um, for Harrison Decorators in Bristol. And this is a picture, it's a really nice, clean, bold picture, which um, was provided to us as a finished, clear piece of work. And it worked really well as a nice header. It clearly says what they are. Just off the screen, we can't see their, um, their title. But it, it also has clear calls to action. And that means that people can, if they're a new customer, they can click and get an estimate straight away. Or they can call and they can click the telephone number and on a mobile device, that will go straight to their um, ringing app. So they'll be able to contact them straight away. 
Also, on your homepage, now is you can include testimonials in lots of different places, but a homepage is a great place. Now, it's worth including a few different ones and ones which will offer different services or explain that you worked in a certain way, as long as they are linked to someone's name and hopefully also a location then that means that people will understand that it's a genuine review and that people will be able to see that they are recommending your services so the best reviews that you can get actually explain the process that you might have gone through that would be uh, i employed this person to do x uh, they completed it in Y and they were excellent because of this, 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 rather than just a straightforward five stars, they're great. Because that doesn't help people get into the mindset and understand what it's like to work with you. So when you're asking for, for reviews, feel free to prompt people with a few questions. So like, could you just explain what it was like to work with me? What sort of service you got, especially if they're a customer who you got on with? then most of them won't hesitate in coming forward and helping you out. This is an example of a clear top of a homepage, and it's got a good example of um, some personalization. Uh, in this instance, Shane of SDL PKP, PKB, um, he set up this business in loving memory of his granddad, um, which we thought was a really nice touch. Um, he's focused on building customer satisfaction, got five stars very clearly. Um, he's got his telephone number and email address that scrolls with the page, um, which are able to be clicked on. And he's got a clear menu at the top with his logo and an endorsement as well. And that tells you a lot of information from the moment that you land on the page. So it's worth having that nice and clear. The next page that we come to is the contact page. So we're gonna have a scroll example here. So the first thing you see is getting a free quote aimed at new customers. Then an exploration of the services, a clear email address and telephone number, the different types of services that are offered, the areas that you serve, and then at the bottom we have a footer, which always has on every single page your email address and your telephone number. Because when people finish scrolling, generally speaking, especially if they're a new customer, they scroll through, they like what they see, they then want to call you. So it's worth having that at the bottom of every page. With contact forms, we think that it's, well, we know that it's very worth having options to give to people. That could be a um, telephone number and email as a minimum. You may also include a contact form, which we saw at the top, which means that people don't even have to leave your website to get in touch. They'll just fill in some information using some boxes. You may even offer your social media channels such as Twitter, Facebook, and so on, because lots of people like to use Facebook Messenger or they'll tweet at you. If you're running LinkedIn, it's worth having that as well, especially for people who are working in B2B, business to business um, type uh, setups. Um, you may even want to put down your office address if you have one. It just lets people know the precise location that you work in. The next pages that we'll look at are what we call your service pages. Now, here we got some example from um, some heating engineers on the right. Um, and essentially, it's all about telling your customer what they want to hear. Now, this is going back to the problem with some one page websites, is that when the customer is looking for a particular service, and in this instance, we can see a few uh, boiler insulation, central heating, bathroom fitting, gas fitting, the, the customer only really wants to read about the job which they want to hire you for. They don't want to hear or read about all of the other things that you might be doing. So having an individual page for each particular service that you offer, or even grouping them into, into smaller chunks rather than having everything all together, it helps the person feel like they're able to find that information quickly. Not only that, from Google's point of view, it also helps with what we call your SEO, search engine optimization. Essentially, SEO is the practice of making your website look attractive to Google and helping you climb up the rankings. Now, Google wants to know exactly what you're offering on that page. First and foremost, Google is a customer service tool. It has to give people the right answers and it has to give them the right answers quickly. 
Otherwise, it's not fulfilling its job. Which is why if you come to a page, which is in this instance, let's take the central heating one, the page is purely written about central heating and how you can input it and how it will be installed and what the costings might be and how long it may take and what type of central heating can be put in. Google's very clear that that page is about central heating in a particular location. And that's where it will help you climb up rather than muddying the waters somewhat. Um, one thing which we also suggest, and this always gets met with a bit of, mm, and uh, is considering including pricing on onto your service pages if possible. Now, I'm not saying you have to put down something which people can hold you to. We would suggest a guide price. Generally speaking, people like it and we find there's a higher engagement when people have an idea of what the price is that they're going into. People don't love engaging with people where they have no idea what the price will be because generally speaking, if you have to ask, then you can't afford it. And if people think, okay, this person is actually within my ballpark and I have an idea of what they're going to be, then they can go ahead. Now, obviously, when it comes to decorating services, especially, it's how long is a piece of string. It's really difficult, especially if you're not going to be able to see the property before you're going around. But if there's some sort of way of giving an indication, it's worth it. The next section of your site which is well worth having are case studies now these would be before and afters and it's well worth trying to tell a story here so what this means is make sure that you're taking pictures before also take pictures during the job and take pictures afterwards even better if you can include the customer within these pictures or yourself actually carrying out the work Alongside those photos, it's worth including even a couple of sentences explaining what is happening at what point, because then people feel like they're actually reading through almost like a magazine article explaining what has happened and when. The reason why we suggest case studies and before and after cases especially is because it massively helps people to visualize what it will be like if they were to employ your services in their home because some people really struggle to understand what your work might be like and if they're presented with just a massive gallery of pictures which we often see on some sites where you have about 100 different pictures they're all jumbled up that's good to a point and it does and you can show off your work but having really clear before and after cases is a really good plan we got an example um, of these sliders, which are really nifty. You can literally slide across, you can see before and you can see after, and these work really well, especially if you have exactly the same um, setup of the picture. So if you stand in exactly the same location, take it from the same angle, carry out the job, take it from the same angle again, and you can actually have a slider. That's one way of doing it. Of course, the other way is just to have the two photos side by side, or have the photos on top of each other, that way, people can clearly see back and forth. I'm just going to click on the ask a question there. Could that be a video? Um, yeah, of course it could be. So it absolutely doesn't have to be um, written text. If you have a video, even better. In fact, we find that video actually has higher level of engagement. If you have the means to be able to um, take short videos throughout the job, so you could take a video at the start, show what it's like, take some videos during, take them afterwards, stitch them together. Um, in fact, lots of things, especially on iPhones, you can just put a little title page on it as well and then host that onto your site. Perfect. That is a perfect piece of um, content to have on your site. Thank you very much, TG. That's a great question. Um, one thing I would say about video is um, be wary of actually having the file itself uploaded onto your site because it can... Um, slow down the loading speed of your page. Um, what I would say is if you have the option to set up a YouTube account, they're free, upload the video to there, and then there's um, an embedding code 
if someone's um, genuinely up for doing this, feel free to email me and I'll talk you through it. But you can just then you can just embed it on your page and it streams it from YouTube rather than from your site, and it's a far quicker process. Uh, next. Um, the about page. Now, this is often a page which is overlooked. Um, this picture here is our own about page. You can see myself, Penny, and Grace just been cut off there. Sorry, Gray. Um, this only really works if you have personalization. There's no point in having um, an about page if it's not personalized. Uh, this has to tell your story and talk about you. And questions to think about. Why do you love working where you work? Why do you love doing what you do? Who's in your team? Um, but most importantly, who is actually going to walk through their door? The customer, generally speaking, likes to see who it is that's going to turn up, knock on their door, and actually be working in their home. Um, it just helps them to build trust, helps them to understand who you are, and it's a nice touch. It's a very nice page to have. And we find that they are also high frequency in traffic. People tend to go to homepage, services, about page before they consider contacting you. Um, London Gas, I will come back to you on the links question though. That's a good question. I will save that one for the end. Next up, so four key points for the future. So this is generally speaking, We've gone through the structure of the page of your site and what are the four key points for you to remember moving forwards? First thing is share it. Spread the word about your site. Google loves sites which are popular and the more people visiting your site, the more popular it gets with Google, the higher it will pick you up. More eyes onto your site equals more potential for work. Now, that doesn't mean you want to be having thousands and thousands of people in different countries or people completely unrelated to you visiting your site. But if you can share it on your Facebook page, share it in Facebook groups, share it on Twitter, share it in general social media, even within your own networks, it all helps. You also, and this is where it comes to, are you ever done? You need to make sure that you're keeping it updated. Now, this means in terms of the technical side of things. So just like your phone shouts at you and says that I need an update and you have to automatically do it overnight, etc., your website will also need updates. Now, this is less likely if you're using something like Wix or Squarespace. Generally speaking, they'll do it automatically for you. If you're using WordPress or you're building one yourself, make sure you're going in and updating it. If you ignore them, which is very easy to do, um, it could actually end up stopping altogether and breaking. So we want to avoid that where possible. Also, we want to maintain the site. Now, we don't want to just ignore it. So we've spent a week on it, we finished it, it's now done. That's not really the case when it comes to, uh, when it comes to websites. What you want to do, and again, this helps from Google, is add to it. Keep it fresh, keep it ticking over. This could be in the forms of photos from a new job or video, as TJ was asking. Um, it could be a new case study. You could have added a new member to your team so you're updating your about page. Anything that you can do just to keep it looking fresh is well worth it. One easy way to do this is to incorporate your social media feeds if you're active on them. If you're not active on them, it's better not to because there's nothing worse than going to a site and seeing that the last time you posted on Facebook was in 2016 because people will think you've probably completely stopped altogether. If you're active and you're posting regular updates to your Facebook business page or Twitter or Instagram, it's worth having them embedded on your site. And most websites can pull the feed through live automatically so as soon as you take a photo and upload it or a video it will automatically pull it through onto your site that's a well worth this sort of a shortcut to updating it and generally we just recommend that people do it especially if you haven't got one because as we said at the start having a website it legitimizes your business and recommendations and it provides you a, prof a professional front whilst also promoting your business. And there's nothing really not to like about that. So 
I'll come on to the freebie in a minute. But first, I just wanted to answer the question here from London Gas. So the question was, I've heard that having more links to your site improves the Google ranking. So what's the best way to get a high number of reciprocal links? Good question. Um, generally speaking, it's all about building your network. Um, it's about getting to know other people. It could be um, people in recipro reciprocal trades. So it could be people who you might recommend who also have a website. So let's say that you're a heating engineer and you recommend a particular decorator or you are a demolition expert who can recommend a particular builder. If you both have websites, it's best to link back and forth to them. Other ways could be um, getting involved in local directories, what we call local citations. So um, most cities, um, have a local index. If you Google it, um, I know for sure in Bristol, there's like the Bristol Post, local news outlets, where you can just, you can make a small profile and you can put a link to your site. Um, those ones link back to you and it passes on some kudos in Google's eyes. So if, I, if Google will generally trust bigger, well-maintained sites, like the BBC, for instance, and if they link back to you, it's showing Google that you're a trustworthy source um, and doing so massively helps your Google ranking, you're right. Um, other ways, um, you could, well, we've got local citations, um, linking from other businesses. Another thing that we came across recently was that um, I met a guy who uh, does demolitions and um, they give away local Christmas trees to, um, to hospices in the local area around Christmas. Um, and that's a really nice um, thing that he does. Um, and we said he doesn't necessarily do it for purpose. It's a bad thing to get out there, especially because it's a pleasant thing. And actually some news outlets were, were happy to run that story and link back. And that massively helps as well. So yeah, any links that you can get from legitimate relevant sources, do so. One thing I would say, definitely don't go somewhere and buy links because Google knows and Google will punish you for those bought links if they all appear overnight. So, finishing up. Um, one thing to say thank you to everyone who's turned up today or anyone who watches back is um, that I'm more than happy to sit down um, and do a one-to-one -one with anyone to discuss their business in detail. So, um, areas that you might be able to improve your site, we'll look over it and make some suggestions for you. Um, more than happy to offer advice, no, uh, no strings attached. Um, the email address is on the screen, so feel free just to jot that down and send me an email. Um, and also as a thank you for all coming along, um, we'll offer 10% off of um, any of our website builds if you decide to go that route or our Google My Business services, um, which are covered um, on our website as well. Um, just use that code there. Uh, in the meantime, here are my contact details or our contact details. Um, feel free to get in touch. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Grant. That was really informative presentation and I'm sure people got a lot from that. Thanks for joining us. Sure, you're welcome. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, and you. Have a good Thank, one. You. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. -bye.